Welcome back to another episode of Big D's and Liam's Custom Garage. I'm Big D. I'm Liam. And on today's episode, we are building us a brand new workbench. Yes, it's not car related, but it's a much needed thing for the shop. Yeah, we... Yes, Liam's workbench has done us great, but it's time for an upgrade. Yeah. Uh, but before we move on to that, there is something that we need to touch base on. For you guys that have been following the videos close on the build of the 350, mainly the port and polishing of the heads. Um, need to let you guys know that uh, I did some boo-boos last week and I am going to own it right now. And you guys need to pay attention to this. I got into the valve seats a couple times last week when I was port and polishing the intake valve. Do not do that. I even made the mistake of telling you guys it was an okay thing because I'm having the them change to bigger ones. And that is also not correct. Um, once you get into them, you have now also altered the shape of the metal underneath and therefore it trashes your heads. Plain and simple, I ruined a perfectly good set of heads. So, when you guys are doing this job, I did everything correct last week. Don't take me wrong, you guys can still follow everything I did. Just when you get up to your valve seats themselves, do not touch them. Yeah. You stop just underneath them. Yeah. Do not get into them. You still get kind of close. Yeah, you can get close, but don't touch them. If you yeah. nick them or anything, your same ass screw. Everything else I did perfectly, just stay away from your valve seats. But since these heads are now trashed and I do not want to spend the money to replace them, we are now on the hunt for a 5.3 LS truck motor. I have been on the deep, deep hunt for the last two or three days but it has also been brought to my attention that this is also tax return time and off season. So every LS that you can find are either going to be snagged up or people are going to be asking stupid money for them <laughs> because they know they can get it right now. But I've still got my fingers to the phone and I'm looking on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and anywhere else that I can and I am trying, 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 trying to find a LS53 as quickly as possible. So yeah, we are now completely getting away from the 350 altogether now and shifting full bore to the LS twin turbo motor. So I've already got a list of all the parts I'm going to need. I've already been doing research and found turbo cams and bearings and, and rings and gaskets and yeah. everything. So I'm ready. Anyway, with that being said, we are now going to shift gears and get started on our new workbench. So enjoy today's video and here we go. Hey everybody. Okay, so what we got going here is everything laid out for our new workbench. So what we got here is half inch four by eight plywood. I went ahead and spent a little bit extra money and got the plywood that's already been sanded smooth on both sides. So we're not gonna get any splinters and stuff like that half it so it's nice good thick and sturdy okay we got our framing boards which are uh two by six uh douglas fir um you're going to need five of them for this if you're uh, going to do this project 
and then over here, so these are two by six by eight, okay? The plywood is also uh, four foot wide by eight foot wide, but while I was at Home Depot, I went ahead and had them uh, cut it directly in half for me. Um, these here are four by six Douglas firs. These are going to be our legs for our workbench. Um, they're a little overkill. I wanted four by fours, but they were sold out of them. So I went the next size up and they were only a dollar more. So I went with the uh, four by sixes. So that's gonna make it really beefy. And then for easy moving around, we have two stationary casters and two um, pivoting casters. You're gonna need a tape measure, a level, carpenter square, a pencil for marking your lines, a drill bit for pre-drilling your holes, for your screws, so you're not uh, blowing out your wood and stuff like that. Uh, lag bolts for the vices when the bench is done, so I can mount the vice, my vice and Liam's vice to the top of the workbench. You're going to need a circular saw. You're going to need a drill. I have my battery drill in here, and I have my. Uh, cord drill out here is backup. You're going to need a jigsaw, and I will tell you guys why you're going to need a jigsaw for this particular project. Um, reason why is, and also why the board's been cut directly in half, is the workbench is going to be two foot wide by eight foot long. Okay? But about halfway down we're going to have a secondary shelf under the workbench so it's not only going to be a workbench but it's also going to create extra storage for us at the same time and because of that and the four by sixes being the legs we have to use the jigsaw to cut the corners off of the board that is going in the middle for the shelf so it will fit around the legs. Okay, quick explanation of how this is going to work and why we have so many two by sixes. So we are going to make two boxes with the two by sixes that will be two foot wide minus the width of the wood, but in reality, the box all together will be two foot wide, eight foot long. We're gonna build two of those. Then the legs will slide down inside and attach on the inside of the frames and the corners. Then the tops will go on. Then the casters will go on the bottom of the feet so they can easily be moved around. So that's the quick explanation there. So enjoy the video. Here we go.
Hey everybody, welcome back. As you guys can see, workbench is done. It is BT. You guys aren't getting all of it. Yeah, it's done yet. I should call it more like our workbench slash bar because it's eight foot long. Slash bed. Slash bed. Slash slash you can. It's, a, it's actually it's a bunk bed. Because there's two levels. Yeah, the, this damn thing is so freaking over engineered I could like set yeah. engine blocks on this and it wouldn't fall. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we can use it as like a moving like just line up blocks on it side by side and just move them around. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Got four by six friggin' legs. Uh two by six friggin' sideboards, half inch plywood. <laughs> Yeah, got both of our vices mounted. Well, you guys saw that in the in the hyperlapse part of today's video, but still sawdust. Yeah, it's still a little salt dusty, but we'll wipe it down. It, believe it or not, even though it's longer, it actually makes more room because it's actually uh, narrower than the um, last bench. So yeah, it's only like what? How, how wide is this? Exactly two foot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. 24 inches, exactly two foot dead on. So, so longer in, but skinny. Yep, so. eight foot by two foot. And, we, and it has casters on it, so it's easily movable. So if it, at any time, if we need to move it out of the way for working on one of the vehicles or something, we can roll it to the other side of the garage. Hell, we can even roll it outside if we need to. Yeah, yeah. With any luck within the next week or two, I will have a 5.3 here ready for us to start doing some things too and get it ready. I'm trying to get a complete 5.3 with the harness and ECU and everything. That way we can at least get it running for now until I can afford to get the Holly EFI system for it. I can still at least run the factory harness and stuff, just cut it down a little bit, mm -hmm. eliminate what isn't needed anymore stuff like that. And so, because we have a bigger garage, we can put it in for now, pull it out later, and stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah, we'll be able to do stuff like that. We'll still be changing the bearings and stuff before it goes in the car, yeah. because it's getting the twin turbos, but like the, like running the truck intake manifold and stuff yeah. like that, we're going to have to run it like that for a little while until I can get the Holly stuff for it, but it's still going to be fast. People oh, yeah. swear by the truck manifolds that they're great performers anyway. And I'm also doing some research and learning how to uh, shave and mold those uh, truck intakes to make them look good. So, and I got a buddy that has a couple spares and he's going to bring them to me that he doesn't need so I can practice on them. So I don't ruin a perfectly good one that yeah. I can use later. So, yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it for yeah. this week. Yeah, that's going to be it for today's episode. Be sure to come and join us Friday. Yes, I know the past couple Fridays our live streams have been a little... Yeah, you might be, not be able to find them anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because... last week we deleted because it yeah. was... Yeah, it was just... It was, just, it was uh, bad. From the start. Yeah, so, so um, but the one previous to that was not all good. that great either. So, yeah. But uh, I think we we're going to have that for sure taken care of oh, yeah. we're this take, Friday. Go take care of that Thursday and have it ready by Friday. Okay, so we'll have all that solved by Friday. So make sure you guys come and join us this Friday for our weekly live stream. Car Talk and other things with Liam and Big D right here on our YouTube channel at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Be sure that you guys like and subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit that bell icon over in the corner so you get first alerts every time that we go live or upload a new video. We will see you guys this Friday. Make sure you come back next Wednesday for another working video. Anyway, I'm Big D. And I'm Liam. And we're out.